It's June. Way up on the Arctic tundra, a tiny little redneck stint has made a scrape in the ground and lined it with leaves and grass and she's laid four eggs. Now together with her mate, she will take great care of those eggs for 20, 22 days until they hatch. Now I'm going to call one of those chicks Tom. Well, for no other reason than I was told that, well, that's his name. Well, the moment Tom and his brothers and sisters have hatched, their mother takes off. Her work is done, but she knows she's leaving them in the very capable hands of their father. And Tom, well, he eats and he eats and he eats and he eats until soon he's round and fat as a ball. At two months of age, he has fledged. He can fly. His father comes to his chicks and says, right you lot, it's time we left Siberia and made the great journey south, all the way to Australia, along the East Asian Australasian Flyway. Tom is very excited. Oh, that means I finally get to visit all those countries. I'll get to see Mongolia, China, Korea, Japan. Oh, steady on, Tom, steady on. We will visit some of those places. Uh, but Australia is a long way south. <sighs> Suddenly Tom is not so sure. Uh, I don't know if I really want to leave Siberia. I mean, this is my home. I've lived here my whole life. That's um, um, two months. <laughs> oh, Tom, let me tell you, uh, Siberia is, well, it's pleasant enough in summer, but in winter it gets very, very C-O-L-D, cold. <laughs> Fueled by all that fat he's carrying, the redneck stints take to the sky. Tom looks over his shoulder at Siberia, the only home he's ever known, disappearing behind him. They fly through the days. And they fly through the nights. They fly for so long that Tom, he grows weary and falls to the back of the flock. Help me, somebody. Help me. I can't keep up. When are we going to get there? Keep flying, Tom. Keep flying. It won't be long before we get to one of the best restaurants on the flyway. I can't keep going. I can't. When are we going to get there? Tom, they've got polychaete worms. Oh, mm, polychaete worms. They've got... Arthropods, mm, arthropods. And sure enough, it's not long before they arrive at one of the best restaurants on the flyway, the Yatsuigata Nature Observation Center, Narashino City, Japan. And when they get there, down they swoop. And Tom, well, he eats and he eats and he eats until soon, He's round and fat as a ball. <laughs> Polly keep worm. <laughs> Arthropod. <laughs> ah, Polly keep worm. Why, hello. <gasps> Tom feels a shadow pass over him. Who, who, who are you? <laughs> I am the grey heron, and I am the largest bird in Yatsuhigata. And you, my friend, <laughs> I don't wish to be rude, but you are very, very small. <laughs> are you planning on staying or is this just a, a flying visit? Oh, I think we'll stay at Yatsuhigata. You've got excellent polychaete worms. <laughs> but later that night, 
Come on, everybody, wake up. It's time we left Jetsuhigata and continued our journey south, all the way to a stre... Uh, uh, actually, we don't want to leave Yatsuhigata. It's really nice here and they have got excellent polychaete worms. <laughs> oh, Tom, let me tell you. Yatsuhigata is pleasant enough in summer, but in winter, it gets very, very <laughs> C-O-L-D, cold. So once again, the redneck stints take to the sky. They fly over a vast ocean. They visit islands. But there are perils on the way. and some will not make it. But Tom, he makes it. And in September, he arrives at Sandy Point in Newport at the end of my street, just 12 kilometers from the city of Melbourne. And well, Sarah and I, we look out for him every year. He's very small. But come March, April, the days get a little shorter. And the mornings can actually be quite C-O-L-D, cold. <laughs> and once again, the redneck stints take to the sky. And this time, they fly north. Tom may only weigh as much as a piece of toast but in his lifetime, he will fly the distance to the moon and back. <laughs>